Here we are today reunited, in the house built on the rock. Here we are today reunited to listen again the only word that saves. The only word that is life, Christ. The incarnate verb that here has descended to dwell with his children. So that all those who want to listen his word and put it into practice, are like those who build their house on the rock. No bad weather will be able to make it collapse. Here is the house of light. So that all those who looking and lifting their eyes to heaven, may see and help so many to see, so that no one may fall into any pitfall, in any trap that the world continually, seeks to place on the path of God's children. Here brothers, our journey that continues, in order to live this time of grace, this full time, which we are now about to live, with a new passage that is the time of Holy Lent, that is about to begin. A time of grace. A time of meditation. A time of purification. So that all those who want to be in communion with the Son of God, may go in front of the tabernacle and ask for forgiveness to Jesus. Ask Jesus to purify the heart, to be ready and willing to live that holy communion, that gives life. Here is the Lord, that invites us in front of his little cradle, to recite that prayer that he himself, revealed to his maiden, Jesus, purify my heart. Jesus, give me a new heart. Jesus, welcome me in your cradle, because this cradle, is your tabernacle. And having understood it, I want to dwell with you for eternity. I don't want to wait any longer Jesus. The time of waiting is over. This is is the time of fulfillment. This is the time of that itinerary that has begun and is about to come to an end. This is the time in which the sons who are dear and faithful to the Master, must repeat loudly the proclamation that was of those first friends, Come, we have met the Lord. Come, we have met the place of the Lord's return. This is what for time and in time, the Lord has revealed, giving His word to His maiden, Mary Josephine Norcia. She who kept every word in her heart. And that has revealed every word in the appropriate time, in the time when Jesus allowed her to do so. Today we live an important anniversary, about the word that was revealed to her. The anniversary of that revelation that speaks precisely of the holy place of the Lord's return. The revelation of February 19, 1995. Years have passed, and those words are more relevant than ever. Those words now are fulfilled because they are lived. Just as Jesus, so many times reminded his maiden, by asking her to remind everyone, asking her to carve it into everyone's heart. So that his word which is life, may find fertile ground in the hearts of his children, not brambles, not the afflictions of everyday life, not the afflictions of those who live and is overwhelmed by this world, but of those who keep in the heart, the only word that saves, the only word that is life, Jesus. The Word made flesh, love made person. Here are those words that we have heard, that we have meditated on, and that today again they return. Jesus says, I suffer, for the disobedient children who still do not respect my words. My beloved children, can you understand the greatness of this great plan of the Father? Can you imagine the Son of God who descends among you, to liberate the world, from all the consequences of sin, to finally make justice to the righteous, making them inherit the land regenerated by the immense love of the Father? Can you understand what it means to live together with the Son of God, together with Mary, my and your mother. Nourished daily by the love of the Father and sanctified from the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Can you my children, only imagine the beauty of heaven, to understand the harmony of creation? Behold, I want that in each of you, there is this certainty. Because in my new kingdom, there will no longer be room for the uncertain and the doubters. My beloved children, I will never tire of repeating that this is the holy place chosen by the Father for my return. This is the message of love. This is the message of joy, the message of eternal life that I send to the whole world, to all my children. It is the word of the Lord. And if it is the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, must be heard and put into practice. Jesus must not suffer anymore. For having given so many words, 
for having given so much love, and to see it all thwarted. Just as today's gospel once again reminds us. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and then you do not do what I say? Then the time has come and this is it, that the children who truly love the Lord, may do the will of the Lord all the way through. The time has come in which again, once again, for the last time, it must be announced to everyone, that this is the holy place chosen by the Lord for His return. This is the time, it is the time of grace that now begins, it is an auspicious time, yes to purify, yes to meditate, yes to intensify prayer, yes to put back in the center love to God and neighbor. Here is the holy Lent. But above all, it is the time to return to announce the most important thing, the salvation of hearts. Jesus has descended here to save his children. Those who love Jesus, feel this announcement as an unavoidable urgency. If we want hearts be saved. If we want so many who grope in the dark, that live in endless desert in this world, come out from this desert. In order to find the oasis of peace and love, we must invite them to come here. So that Jesus may welcome them in his mercy, purify them, save them, so that he can hold them to his heart one by one. This dear brothers is what matters the most. This is the pragmatism of Jesus. So many in this world call themselves pragmatists, practical people. Well, what is pragmatism, from a spiritual point of view? If not making everyone understand the essence and substance of a God that has descended again from heaven to invite his children to welcome him and love him in this little cradle of the baby Jesus, understanding what is spirit. That God is spirit and true worshippers they will have to worship him in spirit and in truth, in order to understand his essence and his substance, that is life. Here is the pragmatism of the Son of God, of the only begotten Son, Father Son and Holy Spirit, who wants his children to be able to come here and be saved. This, is to want to go straight to the point and announce to all that this is the place of return to distance so many who are at the mercy of so many blind guides, blind to what is Holy Spirit. To turn so many away from selfishness and by rampant hypocrisy in this world, which is bringing so many adrift. Open your eyes. Can't you see the many scandals that continuously emerge, in a house that has lost the Spirit of God? How can one tolerate by remaining silent? So many dossiers and so many reports, which the mainstream tries to hide, but who cry out loudly, to the children of God. How one can continue with impunity to abuse the little ones. To cover up decades of abuse, thousands and thousands of abuses, with general indifference. It is not the problem of one country. Now Portugal, France first, and so many. It is a system, that has become corrupted over time. Because it has lost sight of the Holy Spirit, because those guides have become blind of what is spirit. That's why the Father withdrew His Spirit from so many hearts who think they are consecrated but are no longer consecrated. Because the Spirit of God has desecrated, excommunicated them. One cannot abuse the little ones and go unpunished. This is scandal in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the true children of God. They cry out, their cry to our heart. It is not God who has accomplished all this. There is no hand of God behind these people, these figures, there is other. There is no light of the Holy Spirit, there is other. What more does Jesus have to do to invite his dearest children to come out, where his spirit is no longer, to be welcomed into this abode, where with much love has descended? With such patience prepared his itinerary, making use of a maiden with a pure heart, who had the task to be able to announce to everyone the new Jerusalem, heard and not heard. Onward dear brothers! Now, the children who love Jesus the most, must again roll up their sleeves, raise the spirit and the heart, return through the streets of this world and announce that that God whom so many know, is not the true God. That God whom so many try to make known in a different way that he is, is not the true God. If you want to meet Jesus, his essence and his substance come here, to the little cradle of the child Jesus, 
because the infant Jesus has descended here to make himself known, embraced, loved, remaining in communion with his children. To do this, one must be credible, to be credible one must be saints. One must be intolerant to all that is sin. Not to commit the mistake that others have committed and continue to commit. Humble, obedient and pure. The three cornerstone virtues of the Christian faith, that this church well knows. And who wants to be full of Holy Spirit must overcome pride. Because there is no place, there is no compromise between the Spirit of God and pride and the self. Pride no, which is the hardest barrier to break down. When the Holy Spirit finds pride, a pride that does not want to bend, it becomes difficult. It is not God who does not want to save. But it is that I which does not want to be saved, because proud. Those who are humble. Those who are obedient to the word of the Lord. He who lives to be pure, as pure is Mary, everything will do. Those who are docile to the word of the Lord, to the will of the Lord, everything will do. This is what Jesus seeks, docile hearts, pure hearts, humble hearts. This brothers is living Lent. This is what awaits us. The true and first fasting is fasting from sin. Fasting from dislove. Mercy I I want and not sacrifice. This must be the essence that characterize the children of the Mother Church, of the New Jerusalem. Made and raised in image and likeness of their mother, of their mom, Mary, the Immaculate of the Holy Spirit. We take her hands, we take the hands of Jesus and let's move on, proudly and with living humility, in order to win, win and make Jesus triumph in all those who truly love him. And so be it.